Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. Prayer Circle starts now. Now, now. Welcome tonight to Prayer Circle and thank you for taking time to tune in. Those that are regular, Asante Sana. If you're a first timer, also welcome. This is a community of praying people, of people standing together concerning the needs, personal needs, family needs, and national needs, praying together and speaking into these matters from the scriptures. And I always welcome you to participate, send in your prayer requests. Let's stand together with you in prayer. The Bible says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Another version says that continual, heartfelt prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available that is dynamic in its working. So this is not an exercise in futility. It is connecting to God's grace. He's provided the answers. We are connecting to it by faith. So as we start tonight and as we delve into the topic of tonight, being a Thursday, we want to really pray through and give quality time to pray with you. Let's start with Thanksgiving. Let's begin and say, Father, we want to thank you. Just take time and appreciate him as you look back through the day. Tell him, thank you for keeping me in good health. Thank you for watching over me, my going out, my coming in. And even as I'm getting back home or I'm already home, thank you. Or for those that are working over the night, Lord, thank you for an opportunity to work and to have an income and to have some purpose in life, some direction. I appreciate you. And if you're praying and saying, that you're jobless, you don't quite know what to do, thank him that there is hope. The Bible says there is hope even for the tree that is cut down, that it shall sprout again and that it shall not, the tender branches shall not cease, but at the scent of water, it will bud. Lord, we welcome you, the refreshing of the Holy Spirit upon us to quicken those areas that we feel cut down, that have limited our fruitfulness, that have hindered our productivity. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, to brood over them and bring vitality in us once again. Thank you for the needs represented, those that have sent in, those that are still sending them in. We pray, you that knows us better than we even know ourselves, visit us and glorify your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm excited. I look forward to this program because it's a time to pray and present our needs. He says, is any man, you know, anxious? He says, if you have any issue, let him pray. So let's commit it to prayer. Tonight on Prayer Circle, we pray that God will grant you to get into a higher dimension of fruitfulness. Remember this week we are talking about being fruitful in life. And I remember on Tuesday we spoke about the wisdom of God. We, we spoke into it and one of the testimonies is from Cecilia says, Thank you for praying for wisdom on Tuesday. It was my prayer in the morning and throughout the day that the word of that God's wisdom will be on my mind. And I believe this is God's calling on me to pray and ask him. And he gives it freely. Wisdom in my finances. I continue calling on his name and to be strong in salvation. Thank you so much, Cecilia. We talked about the role of wisdom in our walk of fruitfulness. Another SMS from Onesmus in Thika says, kindly pray for me to know and understand God's plan for my life and especially in my career. Praise the Lord. Also connected to wisdom that we're talking about. Anne, right here in Nairobi says, pray for me for divine intervention in the area of provision concerning rent arrears for last month and this month. That's wisdom. We're asking God, what do I do? wisdom in my area in the area of finances wisdom in the area of income maybe that's your prayer also and you can text it in and say what specific area are you asking him for wisdom faith in umoja says kindly requesting for prayer for healing for brian brian in Yakach, we are asking that god will touch him spirit soul and body in jesus name another says pray for good fellowship with the elders in church and brethren at large amen Tonight, I just sensed I want to speak into a vital area as we pray for fruitfulness. And I think we, we mentioned it yesterday in the, in the program with my guest, and we're asking for discernment, we're asking for wisdom, but especially the topic for tonight is understanding the times and seasons. 
understanding the times and seasons. Now, as a farmer, and many of us have grown up in rural areas or exposed to agrarian lifestyle, you know that it's not enough to have good soil. It's not enough to have good seed. Timing is everything. Time is vi timing is vital. You may have good soil, red soil, very rich, full of nutrients. You have great seed recommended by the government or recommended by the research scientists. But if the timing is wrong, you plant after the rains are gone, what's the likelihood of a harvest? Or you plant at the time that the weeds are right there. There's so much about timing in spite of the seed. And many of us have engaged in quality seed. You've given your best. You're putting in your best foot forward. The soil is right. The environment is right. But the timing, the timing, Lord. And First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32 tells us of our people who are in dominion of circumstances because they understood. And it says in First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, let me read it for you. And it says, and of the children of Issachar, who were men who had understanding of the times and seasons to know what Israel ought to do. Their chiefs were 200 and all their brethren were at their command. A couple of things to note as we begin to pray. And I want us to pray and our prayer tonight as we set the pace is, Lord, help me to understand times and seasons. We're told that there's a group of people, the children of Issachar, just like everybody else, they are mentioned in the genealogy. But they were outstanding because they were people who had understanding of times and seasons. And it says they were only 200. It wasn't their multitude. But because they knew what Israel ought to do, everybody was at their command. They were in charge of their situation. And I don't know what you're engaged in. Maybe you're in business and everybody else is in business around you. What will distinguish you is understanding the times and the seasons. There's something about having a designing spirit. Lord, what do I need to put now? As a business person, what do I need to? You're able to project. We are heading to December. You're able to design and realize December coming, the festive season coming, there will be a great influx. What products will be looked for at that time? And you begin to stock up right now. And you become the distributor. When everybody else is trying to stock up then, you've already made a name for yourself in that area. Praise the Lord. People are going back to school. What is the time and the season? What goes at such a time? What service can I provide at this time? Can I speak to somebody who's been jobless? The issue isn't there is no work in Kenya. The issue is God grant me understanding of the times and seasons so that what I carry, there is where I can present it and it will be relevant. Think about it, in a couple of months, they will be sitting for exams. What if rather than sitting down and mourning how for the past five years you've been jobless since you graduated with honors or with a good grade, what if you converted that to an opportunity, understanding the times? What if you put up yourself and said, I will go around my estate and do tuition in math because the students are going for exams, KCSE, KCPE, and the junior school, all this. So that is something you can make use of. And you go and print a few papers and give to the people around and say, I am offering tuition in maths and sciences. Get your child ready for KCPE. Ah, who won't come to you? And your cry will no longer be, Peter, I'm jobless. Your cry is, God, help me to handle the influx. So right now, I want us to pray that God will give us understanding. Even if you're employed and you're saying, I don't know, they're not promoting me. What is the season? What is the time? Where is the company going? How can I escalate this matter, anticipate and be ahead of the pack by providing solutions, writing proposals, writing ideas that will push the company forward where we are going in the next two years, three years, five years? I want us to ask for the spirit of wisdom, understanding for the times and seasons. Shall we do that? Join me as we pray right now. 
and even our brother Onesmus, as you're asking to understand God's plan for your life, and Anne, as you're praying for intervention financially, let's pray in faith, even as you're waiting for that interview for, for a report. And this one that is praying for the elders and brethren for good fellowship, understanding the times and the seasons. Let's pray together. I just want you to ask God to quicken your mind, quicken your heart. This is a personal prayer. You know your situation, you know your workplace, you know your job situation, you know your financial situation. Ask him for understanding of the times and seasons. Mm -hmm. Some of us are stuck because we've not adjusted to the times and seasons. It's like staying stuck and saying, I did my typewriter course and I passed with flying colors. And you're lamenting that you're not getting work done, but we've moved, the seasons have changed. We are no longer using the typewriter as we knew it. So we are asking God, Lord, help me to change and adjust. Help me to develop new competences as a teacher. Yes, you've trained. What else can I acquire? Apart from my P1 training, apart from my, my grade training, what else can I do? Can I go for some counseling course and become a, a guidance and counseling teacher? What else can I do? Let's ask God for understanding for the times and seasons. We are not called to be stuck and fruitless because we only studied one thing and we are begging God to open doors in that area alone. I want you to ask him, Lord, help me to discern the times as we are shifting to a lot of digital space things. How can you engage in the shift? Let's ask God for wisdom, 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 and understanding of the times and seasons. Father, I pray for each one of us that this will be a day and a time and a season where you quicken our hearts to realize what else we can do to get out of the starkness, the barrenness, instead of blaming the weather, what we can do to get out and become fruitful. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. After this, this song break, I'll let you know about a story, a, an account of how a people in this Kenya Makueni County specifically, were able to get unstuck, understanding the times and seasons, how a man of God gave them a way out of that predicament, of always depending on government help, crying, it is too dry, we are hungry. Mm -mm. God has a way out for you. And I love it, it says, right your story. <laughs> it's getting me excited because that is what God wants you to do. Write your story. When it comes to being fruitful in life, don't be a victim of circumstances. You need to write your story. And this is the story I told you that I'll let you know. Makweni County. It's good to hear from what others are doing. One of the fathers of the faith in our nation, and uh, he's called uh, Reverend Titus Masika, dad to our sister Masi Masika, doing great things. And I loved an initiative that he engaged in Makweni. And for a long time, people were depending on government aid. In the local community, it is known as Moolio. So he engaged in a project called OMO, Operation Moolio Out. There is enough of us having to depend on others just to eat. You get to a point and say, I'm created like others. Enough of being a victim and crying that there is no rain, that I have to depend on government aid. And what is being given is not even the best that I want to have. And as a grown man, as a grown woman, how long will I depend on a lorry coming to feed me and my family and my children? When will I move forward? And it pained him and he sought the face of God. And one of the creative ideas is transitioning from rain-fed agriculture to, because bottom line, what the plant requires is water whether it's coming from heaven above or from elsewhere, what the plant needs to grow is water, period. 
So he came up and started gathering the farmers and saying, look, we cannot depend on rain-fed agriculture. It's hot, it's dry. Why don't we build the dams and create reservoirs that we'll use even after the rains are gone? And that is how the initiative spread throughout the county. And they started kicking out the government aid, OMO, Operation Molio out. Understanding the times and the seasons, you need to accept where you are at. And I, I won't go it for much. Uh, you look for it on the online and you'll get more about that. But applying it in your own life. Have you understood your times and seasons? Financially, you're asking God for a breakthrough. What does financial breakthrough mean? You're simply saying a windfall, a large sum of money, then what? Yes, you'll pay the debts. Yes, you'll pay the rent. Yes, you'll pay the, the bills that are pending. Then what? What happens the next two, three, four, five months? So you get to a point and say, Lord, help me to understand my incomes, my outcomes. What are the streams? How is my financial landscape? That's where we are talking about understanding my times and seasons. I'm on salary. I get this amount of money. I get 20,000 a month or 50,000 a month. And these are my needs. How is my landscape? What is flowing in? What is going out? So in the periods that there is dryness, what else can I engage? What are not just my skills, what else can I do? What am I trained for? That's what is getting you a job. You are employed because of probably something you trained in. You did BCom, so you're accounting, you did whatever you did. You're a teacher, you're a, whatever you did. You're in pharmacy, you're a chemist, you're a doctor. But what other skills do I have I'm a communicator. How can I engage this to put it out there and solve problems in communication? I'm a writer. What can I do? So you begin to understand my times and seasons and balance it out. That will also inform your monthly budgets because you realize my seasons is my flow comes basically at the end of the month. So in between here, I don't have any consistent inflows. So I need to manage what I have. Understanding the times and seasons, let's begin to ask God, Lord, help me to be a good manager. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, to everything there is a season. Meaning even what you're doing now, it's not permanent. Times are gone where we used to look for secure jobs that we can retire in. Those days, unfortunately, are gone. What was secure yesterday? The global scale is changing. The global atmosphere is changing. You suddenly realize they are laying off. And the one secure job is no longer secure. You, th you thought you could retire there like our parents did. It's no longer the same. The, to everything, there is a season. A time to every purpose under heaven. Ask the Lord, Lord, while I'm here and I have this income, thank God I'm secure. I have a regular income, but it's for a time. What do I need to do now to secure my future, to secure my children's future? He says there's a time to be born, a time to die. So nothing is permanent. A time to plant, a time to pluck up what is planted. Time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. I want us right now as we begin to pray, ask the Lord to design what you need to do in your present situation. Stop crying and fighting to get out of it. Ask him, Lord, understanding, what do I need to do now? Some of us, we need to reduce our, in, our expenditure now, even if the salary is good, so that you begin to invest it because a time will come when a letter is given you and you're told we are sorry, we love your work, but the company is going through a merger and we have to cut 50%. Didn't we see that? Even media houses right here in this nation having to lay off people. So you trained in that area. You are the best in that area. But when it comes to laying off, what happens? Oh God, why are they putting me away? There is time for everything. I want us to pray, Lord, grant me understanding. Some of us need to begin to acquire some skills on the side while you're doing what you're doing. 
that God may prepare you for the next season. Don't be caught flat-footed. Let's ask him, Lord, help me to discern, to understand the times. In the name of Jesus, you've trained in one area, but God is giving you this time when you are jobless to begin to put some strategies in place, to put some proposals in place, to begin to explore other avenues apart from the BCom you studied, apart from the engineering you studied, apart from the chemistry you studied, that Lord, grant me understanding of the times. As a stay-home mom, rather than complain and say, Lord, I'm forgotten by everybody else, ask God for discernment. While my child is growing, these next two years, while I'm going to raise them up as a stay-home mom, what can I be doing? What skills can I acquire online? There are many free online courses. What can I put out there? Ah, let's ask him for understanding. Ask him for understanding. Maybe you're taking care of someone unwell and you have to left to leave your job. Lord, what else can I do? And while I'm in this, how can I be, a, be an advocate for people that are struggling in such a situation? You're raising somebody who's having sickle cell. How can I connect to the sickle cell society and be a blessing and be an advocate concerning breast cancer, concerning cervical cancer? Whatever it is, tonight we are asking, Lord, show us what to do in this season. We will not complain. We will not be bitter. We will not look for who to blame. We ask, help us to understand this time and this season and what we ought to do. There is a response for us in this particular situation. In my season of being in between jobs, in my season as a single, in my season as somebody who's just retired, show me what I ought to do in the name of Jesus. Samuel, there in Mombasa, wisdom in this season, what do I need to do? In the name of Jesus. Eunice, in Nakuru, and each one, wherever you are, wisdom, Magi Lugalia, wisdom, as, as I'm working there in the school, wherever I'm working, what do I need to do? What do I need to initiate to be a blessing that will later be a legacy to live in this school, in this organization, in this community? Lord, we ask for your wisdom. We bless you because of your grace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Remember, you can still text in 786 316 Ask God to make you a river, to flow out. In the midst of your pain, God can turn it to gain. God can, can turn it to be a blessing to others. Let me flow out to my generation. As we are praying tonight for fruitfulness in life, let me ask you, who of us have seen a mango tree eating of its fruit? Or who have you seen an apple tree biting and munching of itself? In case you did, you will call your pastor and say there is a demonic mango tree or apple tree in my compound because the fruit is not for the tree. The fruit is for the community. You live for others to live. And that will be our topic tomorrow, living for others. But I'm just giving you a taste. When you talk about make me a river, your fruitfulness is congruent or commensurate to how much you are flowing to others. As you pray for understanding the times and seasons, your question is, Lord, am I flowing out as I ought to? Some of us are waiting for God to open doors for jobs. And that is good. But the greatest question is not the job question. It's the work question. There's a difference. The job is what you are trained for. It's what you are being paid for. The work is what you are born with. It's what you are delivering to your generation to solve problems. And you get rewarded for it. So you're asking, this one says, this is Victor, I have challenges at work. I would love to have a better job. That's right. I need finances to take my son to a better school. He's facing the challenge of autism and his baby, I pray for his behavior as well. It's getting harder as he grows and we pray that God will 
grant you that opportunity. Have an income that is sufficient to raise him up and connect to the right people. And if you need to join support groups that will encourage you as you raise him, you know, the Autism Society, people that are going through this and they tell you, we made it, they encourage you to press on. They give you wisdom, creativity, ideas. That's part of the wisdom we are praying for. That Lord, who do I need to connect to? The right company. If all we are hanging around people, the people we are hanging around with are people like us, there's very little likelihood we'll be better than what we are. You become who you hang around with. So if you're hanging around with complainers who are saying we are jobless, we are unfortunate, the government is not doing enough, they have deceived us, they have, they have, and you spend the day with that conversation, how much better will you be? But you get to hang out with somebody who says, I was where you are, but I got this idea, I engaged it, I'm now better. You get the potentials in you stirred up. So one of the wisdom you're getting tonight is, connect me to the right people. Understanding the times. What if where you are working is not just about your salary, it's about the know-how, the skills that you're to connect with. You're angry with your boss, they are not paying you half as much as what you are doing. They don't recognize what I'm putting in. That's okay, fine, they don't. And we understand it's a concern. But guess what? What if God brought you along for a season to learn from them? how they started that company, because God wants you to start your own at a point in life. But you are blinded by the salary, and I'm not saying you shouldn't be concerned about it, but as you get your salary, get the non-salary benefits, learn. There are people, there are networks, connect to the Lord. Praise the Lord. There are people who failed to discern the times. There's a man called Gehazi. He was serving Elisha. Now, when you are serving somebody like Elisha, God is connecting you to carry an anointing for your generation. Am I speaking to a man of God, a woman of God? Elisha had been serving Elijah, the prophet of God, a man of God, fire prophet. And you know what he carried? He was irresistible. He was a national voice. And the mantle came upon Elisha. And by God's grace, Gehazi was privileged to serve as a PA to Elisha, but he missed the season. May God help you not to miss your season. And one day, the king, the commander of the Syrian army, Naaman, comes with leprosy and asks to be healed. And Elisha tells him, go dip yourself in the river, that dirty river Jordan, seven times. And this guy is angry and says, are there not cleaner rivers? But his servant tells him, please do that. And he does it and he gets healed. And he comes back with a huge prophet offering, ready to just bless Elisha. And Elisha says, mm -mm -mm -mm. it's okay, just go with it. Go, go thank God. Go believe this God. So what does he do? He carries the soil from Israel and goes back home and goes to establish the worship of Yahweh in Syria. But Gehazi said, oh, Kabi SEO, ah, ah, that money is going like that. Prophet offering. Ah, Elisha is blind. All those cars, gold, silver. Ha, ah, no, I can't let it go. It won't go. So after they've gone for some hours, Gehazi gets into his own, maybe gets into an Uber, rushes after him and tells him a lie, that there's such a need that has come and Elisha needs a couple of things. And of course, the, the Naman, Naman the Syrian is so happy, he adds much more, double and triple. And just as Gehazi is sneaking back home, Elisha tells him, uh -huh, where had you gone? I was nowhere, I was just around. He says, did not my spirit go with you? when you are uh, alighted from the chariot and asked for those, is it time for houses and lands and silver and gold? And he told him, guess what? You missed the timing. Naman's leprosy, you have just received it. As you are getting greedy for stuff, you have also signed up for the same leprosy and it will follow your generation. And that was the end of Gehazi's ministry. The lesson to learn that gold is bad, no. 
that houses are bad, no, that we shouldn't build, no. The lesson was, what was the timing? If Gehazi had waited on timing, all those things were part of the package. But he rushed ahead of time and he missed his destiny. Can I speak to a single? Don't rush ahead of time. Don't say my biological clock is ticking, so I better get a child. This man, when I'm squeezy, this man, they're just funny. This church man, uh -uh, let me go. Where are you rushing? It's part of the package. As a teen, why are you rushing? The sexual experience, why are you rushing at it? God made you, he put those organs and everything. He had in mind the fulfillment, but follow his timing. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes, he makes all things beautiful in his time. I want us to pray tonight that Lord, help me to discern the timing for my life. When I need to put out my skills and where when the relationships need to be built or those that need to be cut off to be cut off lord grant me understanding of my time the lessons i need to learn from the place i'm at as i desire to transition lord grant me the grace grant me the wisdom there are networks i need to connect with there are people I need to submit to in this season so that there is an impartation of grace, of wisdom. Some may not even be believers, but they have wisdom about your business. They have wisdom about financial management. There is a wisdom that God wants to deliver to you and I in the space we are in. I ask, Lord, grant me wisdom. Grant me understanding of the times and seasons while I await a transition to a better space, a better job, a greater income. Lord, grant me to understand what I need to do now to transition to that desirable space. Father, I ask you for your wisdom and your help. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I believe tonight God is granting you that wisdom right here. And of course, you can also get great music all day long on our station, online streaming station, Radio 316, where the music does the talking. So visit www.radio316.com and listen. You can put the music just to speak into you. And also right here on Family Radio during the day at 9 all the way to 1, we have a celebration of music with our brother Wilfred Njero just speaking the voice of hope, of grace, of victory, the music that carries that message. Then if you have a, a taste for African flavors, our brother Alex, <laughs> from four o'clock to six o'clock with Gospel Sounds of Africa, we celebrate what God is doing. So as we wrap up tonight, our take home is, Lord, help me to understand my times and my seasons and what I ought to do. I may not have to do what others are doing. Others are protesting and resigning. But what do you want me to do? As an associate pastor, under the lead pastor, and everyone is complaining, Kwani, when will they give us time? What do I need to do? Is it to join the protests and say, away with him, let's start our ministry? Or what, what grace do I need to receive in my company, in my home? What do I need to adjust? Very important to understand the times. And Queen Esther was at such a critical point, like the president of America was talking about an inflection point. Mm -hmm. I like to get some new words. <laughs> and he says, America is at that point. You too may be at such a point. And Esther needed to make a decision. And Mordecai told her, don't think that building in the palace will make you escape. But who knows whether you have come into the kingdom for such a time as this. I want us to pray that God helps us to understand his heartbeat for such a time as this. What opportunities for the kingdom's development and growth do I need to capitalize on where I'm at? As a teacher, it's not just about my salary. Whose lives do I need to touch that will make a difference? How many teachers 
are the reason why certain people are standing in society and have shaped societies and history's course because a teacher spoke into their lives. A teacher believed in them. Somebody, you are at a counter, but you are the difference between them going to give up and kill themselves and them making a decision to finish up the race and be strong. Lord, help me to understand why I'm where I am for such a time as this. Who do I need to touch? Who do I need to help? Who can I be a bridge to their next place in life? As you sought my issue, I surrender to you. Let me be a river. The songs tonight have spoken into it. You have my surrender. Make me a river. And this next one will be speaking about broken. Lord, as I'm broken, flow through me. I want us to pray right now, praying for Emmanuel, that God will be with you. Open doors, even grant you wisdom to make the right choices. Faith also, praying for God to strengthen every aspect of your life, finances, your work, and every other area. Emily, as you're feeling down and discouraged emotionally, that God will speak strength and help in Jesus' name. And Timothy, that God will preserve your family, your children, even for the long haul. Let's pray as we close that, Lord, we desire reveal to us as individuals why we are where we are at and how we can be a blessing to the kingdom for your purposes. Lord, even in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the disappointments, who can we be a value addition to? who can draw lessons, life lessons from us, from both our successes and even our failures, use us in our brokenness. Because even the broken pieces can be put together to deliver purpose in the name of Jesus. Like they say, even a broken crayon can steal color. Father, we pray that in the places of our brokenness, seeking to be productive and fighting, struggling, Use us as you change us, transform us, build us, make us a blessing. Because we pray this confidently in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. And as we prayed, make us a blessing. Thank you, that is, you that is partnering with us for being a blessing. It's not just about us. You're helping us to deliver this content to a wider audience. Thank you for your regular givings and even your one-time givings. And those that have not started, please do. Begin today, 22nd of August. Make a decision. If you've not received your salary, decide that part of it I'll send to Family Media. The MPESA pay bill, 316, 316. The account name is your telephone number. Let us know or send a text to 20316, written partner, and we'll reach out to you. From all of us here, God bless you, make you fruitful, help you understand your times and your seasons. Shalom. Prayer Circle, where broken hearts meet the healing hands of God. Prayer Circle starts now. Now. Now.